Let us look at this problem called max points on the line. Given an array of points where points of y equals to x i y i represent a point on the x y plane, return the maximum number of points that lie on the same straight line. This is one example where 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3 all lie on the same line. And then given example 2, this is this. Uh, we can see a bunch of these points are on the same line. Okay, so let's try it out on a whiteboard. So how do we form a line? Uh, well, any two points will form a line, right? So we can, out of the n points that are given to us, we could potentially look at all the n square combinations. And then what? Then exactly identify if all of those different combinations, if they fall on the same line or not. Like which of them fall on the common line? Or the more, that, that's something that we have to find. So how do we uniquely identify a line? Right, so that's what it comes down to. So, so we know y equals to mx plus c. Right, so one of the ways that we could potentially do is, is we can find all the pairs of points and from that we identify the uh, line uniquely. So you can identify line uniquely using m and c, right? The slope and the intercept. Uh, and if you can identify the other unique points, maybe we can use some hash map or something where we save the, uh, the unique key for a line and add all the different unique points on that line. And then whichever that line has a maximum point set on that, sort of. Um, so let's look at some example. Um, so let's say this is our coordinate x-axis and y-axis, and you can have a, you can have one line like this. You can have another line exactly parallel to this. So both of them have the same slope, but the in this case the c is something that would be different. So let's say there are three points on this line or other four points here and let's say some five points here so if you calculate the slope of both the slope would come out as same but the intercept would be different that's what it, it will distinguish so how about we do this for every point right so for every point let's say i pick up this point I'll see all the lines that this point belongs on, right? So because I'm a fixed point, uh, all the points that this line belong on, so one I will get this, other I will get this. Basically, I look at all combinations from this point. So for all three of those, I will get the same slope, right? And because I fixed the point, the intercept is fixed, right? By fixing one point. So for every, for, from, from one of the points, if I get the same slope while going to multiple points, then they are all on the same line. And for the all other ones, like these are all, will give me different, different slopes, right? So starting from every point, if I find the same slope, uh, then all of those uh, belong on the same line. So what you're saying is, for every point, find all lines that it can be part of among those lines uh, which has the max points is what we'll track and we'll do that for every point so for doing that for one point what will be the time complexity on the space complexity? So for every point, we're looking at each and every point to look at all the lines it can be part of. So that will be O of N, right? And for each of those lines, we're finding the slope. So finding slope would be O of one. And we're also checking if the slope already exists. So for that, we will use a hash map and, and then looking up of slope or adding uh, points that slope or adding counter slope that will be O of 1. So the overall time complexity for a one point will be O of n, right? O of n. For example, like in, in case this point, I would, uh, the highlighted point here, I would find it okay. This point obviously has to form a line, like a single point, you mark the number of points as 1, and you will find this guy with some line, this guy with some line, this guy with some line. 
right so all of those would be same and then this will be different this will be different this will be different this will be different and from this point we'll get the answer as hey i found this line with four points and then when i repeat the process let's say from this point i'll do the same thing so for this guy i'll get one two three four other points which form the same line so four plus one itself and all of these would be all different, uh, right? So from this point, I got the answer as four. From this point, I got the answer as five. And I'll take five as the answer. That's what we'll build. So how do we find the slope now? Well, that's quite basic, right? Uh, so slope equals to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. The problem can come. What if x2 minus x1 is 0? Then what do you do? Well, let's handle that. What does that mean? That means uh, all the vertical lines, right? Something like this, 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 all of these kind of lines. So for this case, uh, handle separately maybe. A special case. Okay, let's try and build that logic now. So before that, so this we did for, uh, like you said that the O of N is the point time velocity for one point and there are N points and we'll repeat the process for each of them. So overall time complexity would be O of N squared, right? Now let's try and build that up. So what are we saying? So we're saying that we go through each and every point. So i equals to zero, i less than constant length, i plus plus. And now here uh, we go through each and every uh, other point, like a pair. So j equals to zero, j less than constant length, j plus plus. See all the points, and then if j is equals to equals to i, we'll just continue, right? We don't want um, that case. We are looking at all other points. Now, now we're looking at each and every pair. That this point is part of. I want to find out the slope, right? So. Let's go x1, x1, y2. So x1 equals to x1 equals to points of uh, i0, y1 equals to points of i1. Similarly, x2 equals to points of j0 and y2 equals to points of j1. So now slope equals to, because it can be like a fraction, let's use them as double. So double, double. So these are the two points that we're looking at and we find the slope. Um, slope would be y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1. Now we talked about the case where a x2 and x1 can be equal. So let's handle that separately. So if x1 equals to x2, we do something else. So let's let's do so for every point, we're trying to build a hash map, right? Um, double integer, let's call it slope. So one is slope lines, 
you call it new hash map and let's also have vertical lines so that will be the vertical axis will be the special case for x1 equals to x2 right so if x1 equals to x2 then we'll add it into the vertical line so and we'll use the key as the value of the x so um, vertical lines dot uh, put whatever x1 or x2 and increment with the last value so 1 plus um, vertical lines dot cat or default right so we increment the count um, and now what do we do well we find uh, uh, we'll also want to maintain some max right and we'll initially keep max as one because okay, if there's only a single point, you will return just that point. So we can do max equals to max dot max of uh, max comma vertical lines dot cat x1, right? That's fair. And if it's not a vertical line, then we'll find the exact slope. So this would go into the else bit. So this is the slope and now we'll do slopey lines dot push. So slope lines. Uh, we'll use the slope as the key. Oops, and the slope lines dot Right, so and then again same thing as that if this is bigger than keep the max track of max always so matter max if max comma um, all good there right so that's way for this point we find the max the uh, line that contains a maximum number of points which also contains this point and we'll repeat that for each and every point we'll get the max overall so at the end of it and uh, well, at the end of it, okay, let's keep this max as zero. So, because there is one thing like I am adding all the other points in the in either the vertical lines or the slope lines, not the point that we fixed, right? So, that's something we have to be wary of. So, we'll do this. Um, if or we can just return max plus one actually yeah so either max would be zero that would mean that i did not find any line at all that that would only happen if um, you only had one point in which case you return that point otherwise you if there will at least two points and max would be one and one plus one would be two that is fair okay let's run and see if there are any issues that's some issues line number 27 Okay, some mess up happened. So this, this, this. All right, let's run again. That's accepted, let's submit. And it is, it works. There is a slight uh, thing I wanted to just mention. So we considered this vertical lines as a special case Essentially, we wanted to get the slope, but the problem with the vertical lines was when you're calculating the slope, this x2 minus x1 becomes zero, and that, that and that gives uh, me a problem, right? So there is a uh, what we could do is we can actually get the angle using the arctangent function and avoid handling this as a special case. And what does that mean by that is is um, so uh, let's say we just maintain we get rid of this vertical lines thing. We don't explicitly handle this. And then that would mean is that
like instead of this slope, we'll get the angle, right? So we'll get angle and we can use the arc tangent function. So math dot tan two and you pass in the y2 minus y1 and the x2 minus x1. to that function and now um, whatever slope we can use the same thing and we can use the angle as the key and and, and use that because the angle will ensure that if for the vertical lines it will get the angle is 90 degrees and so on so all that is fine. But obviously, uh, then we need to know this math function. But if you don't know, then obviously they are handling the slope, getting the slope uh, using the normal geometry should also be fine. All right.